I am making an updated Earthbound Immortal Decrophile. I've been playing around with Earthbound Immortal since I came up with this idea. And I've been playtesting it. I like how it is, but I am still testing it. So, if there's anything you can see that you think could be improved, feel free to comment those below. Starting with monsters. Play two copies of Supe. And two copies of Flyer and Ascator. These are only in here to help go into your, your Synchro Monsters. But when you use the effects of either the three copies of Supe Does Quaker or three copies of Flyer or Ascator Dawnwalker. But these two share the effects of you can discard one card from your hand, especially on from your Special on this card from your hand, and then the corresponding tuner from your deck. But when you use this effect, you can't summon from the extra deck unless it's a synchro monster. And you'll use each effect once per turn. Then I play two copies of the Earthbound Greater Linewalker. Greater Linewalker can be special summoned just by having a synchro monster on your field and your graveyard. Once per turn, it lets you search your deck for any Earthbound Immortal. And if an Earthbound Immortal is summoned to your field while you control Greater Linewalker, you can change your opponent's life points to 3,000. Then the core, or the engine I decided to toss in with Earthbound Immortal that I thought would be kind of interesting since you don't have to entirely rely on the Earthbound Immortals. I play three copies of Eldritch the Golden Lord. You can send a spell or trap from your hand to, with this card. You can send this card and a spell trap from your hand to the graveyard, target one card in the field, and send it to the grave. And then you can send one spell or trap in your field to the grave, return it from your graveyard to your hand, and then summon a zombie from your hand with a th th thousand additional attack points. And it can't be, I believe it was destroyed by card effects until the end of the turn. Then, for the Earthbound Immortals, I play one copy of Earthbound Immortal Weir Kotaraska, one copy of Asila Piscu, one copy of Kokoraya, one copy of Earthbound Immortal Kusalu, Chaku Chalua. Uh, just realized the way I have these. One copy of Earthbound Immortal Kokopakapu, and then the one copy of Earthbound Immortal Uru. The Earthbound Immortals have been some of my favorite monsters since they first showed up in the anime Yu Gi Oh! Arc, Arc 5. That would have been bad. Yu Gi Oh! 5 Ds. And ever since they showed up, they've always been my, one of my favorite boss monsters. So whenever I play an Earthbound Immortal deck, I have to play all seven. But Earthbound Immortal, we're co they all share the effects of if there's not a field spell in play, they'd self-destruct. They can't attack directly, but your opponent can't target them with card effects. And then they each have their own individual effects from there. We're Coach Roscoe lets you shuffle up to three car face up cards in your field to the or face up. Three cards on your field back into the deck to make your opponent discard an equal number of cards, and for each card discarded, Weir Coach Araska gains an equal a thousand attack. Then Asila Piscu, if it leaves the field other than by its own effect, it destroys all face up monsters your opponent controls, and then burns your opponent eight hundred points of damage for each card destroyed by its effect. Kokoraya, if it leaves the field other than by its own effect, just nukes the field. Uru lets you attribute one monster you control, then target a monster your opponent controls. Take control of it till the end of the turn. Chaku Chalua can, by giving up the ability to attack, can burn your opponent for half its defense points. And if, if Chaku Chalua is in defense mode, then your opponents cannot enter their battle phase. Kusalu, it, it can attribute one other monster you control to save itself from being destroyed by battle. And if you use this effect, your opponent's life points are halved. And then Koko Pakapu, if it destroys a monster in battle, your opponent takes damage equal to the destroyed monster's attack points. 
their original attack. But these are just my favorite boss monsters since they were first revealed in 5Ds. And because of that, they'll probably always be some of my favorite monsters. Another version of this deck I'm working on is Earthbound Ogdoatic. Feel free to comment down below if you think that'd be something you want to see. Then for the spells, I play the one copy of Terraforming since you do need your field spells in order for the Earthbounds to work. Set rotation since I just so you can prevent your opponent from playing new field spells and getting to one you want simultaneously. Then I play the one copy of Magical Midbreaker field. If you'd rather, if you don't want to play a Magical Midbreaker field, then you can also play Chaos Space, I believe it's called. No, I think it was Chaos Field. But as a field spell, it makes your opponent search for a Blackluster Soldier monster. Or you can play Oracle of Zephyr, which makes your opponent search for a Zephyr monster. But I play Magical Midbreaker field just because when your opponent activates it, they can't activate a new field spell anyway. And it prevents both players from targeting the other players' monsters. Then I play the one copy of Seven Cities of the Golden Land. This just lets you fusion summon, and then if a zombie monster is special summon blows its face up, you can target one set card in your opponent's spell and trap zone. It can't be activated until the end of the turn. Then I play three copies of Cursed Eldland. Cursed Eldland is the one thing in this deck that I don't know how I feel about it, just because it pre prevents, as long as it's based up on the field, you cannot attack with anything unless it's a zombie. But you can pay 800 life points, search your deck for a Golden Lands spell or trap, and if it goes from the field to the grave, you can send a Golden Land spell or trap from your deck to the grave. And you can only use each effect once per turn. Then for the, my primary field spell, I play three copies of Earthbound Geoglyph. This field spell lets you treat a Synchro Monster you control as two tributes where the tribute summon of an Earthbound Immortal. And if you Synchro Summon while it's face up, then you can search your deck for any spell or trap that lists Earthbound Immortal in its, in its name from your deck to your hand. And then while you control a level 10 monster, Th then your field spell cannot be targeted or destroyed by opponent's card effects. So, that's part of the reason why I like the Eldritch stuff, because you can get an Eldritch in play and that prevents your opponent from targeting or destroying Geoglyph. That is it for the spells. Moving on to the traps, I play one copy of Ultimate Earthbound Immortal. This just lets you target one monster opponent controls once per turn and destroy it, but you can only use this effect if you control an Earthbound Immortal. Then I play one copy of Metaverse just so I can add an Earth a field spell from my deck to my hand or activate a field spell from my deck. And then I play two copies of Walk Arrow of the Golden Land. Walk Arrow can activate you can know, when activated, Walk Arrow can be summoned to monsters down as a monster. But if you control an Elitch the Golden Lord, then you can target one card in either player's grave and remove from play. And then during the end phase, this is in your graveyard, you can banish it to send an Elixir from your deck. We can only use one of those two effects per turn. Then I apply three copies of Conquistador of the Golden Land. Conquistador can be activated in some of those spell and trap zone as a monster. And then when it's summoned, if you control an Eldritch, the Golden Lord, you can target one face-up card in the field and destroy it. And then if it's in the graveyard, because during the end phase, you can banish it to set an Eldritch from your deck. But you can only use one of those two effects per turn. Then I play three copies of Eldritch or Scarlet Sanguine. Scarlet Sanguine lets you... Summon an Elitch the Golden Lord from either your deck or graveyard. Or if you control a zombie, an Elitch the Golden Lord, you can special summon it any zombie. And during at any point while it's in the graveyard, you can banish it to set a Golden Lands a Golden Land spell or trap from your deck. But you can only use one of those two effects per turn. That is it for the traps. Moving on to the extra deck. And the extra deck can literally be whatever you want, as long as it's level 6 or 7, 
or like seven, six or eight. You can play level sevens if you want, but they probably won't be seen very often. But starting off with the level six synchros, I play three copies of Star's Charge Warrior. That's because when it's synchro summon, you get to draw one card. So sometimes you need that one card. Then I play one copy of Naturia Barkeon, just because when your opponent activates a trap, you can banish two cards from your graveyard, and you hate the activation. And if you do, destroy it. Then I play one copy of Moon Dragon Quia. Quia it has the effect of if it's targeted for an attack, you gain life points to go to half the attacking monster's attack. And then if it's on the field is destroyed, then you can target one Sun Dragon into your graveyard and summon it to the very special on that target. Then in the finish off the level 6 synchros, I play one copy of Goyo Guardian just because the little level 1 tuner. Stupe just happens to be an earth monster. And for level 8 synchros, I play one copy of Star Spark Dragon just so I can target cards on the field and prevent them from being destroyed by card effects or the quick effect. One copy of Thought Ruler Archfiend. I just play this because I really like Thought Ruler Archfiend. This can literally be any other level 8 synchro that's probably better. But the main reason I really like Thought Ruler Archfiend is just because of how uh, if it destroys a monster in battle, you gain life points without monster's attack points. I was, sorry for the pause, I was reading and forgot to pause the video. Or the recording, I mean. Then I play one copy of Cypher and Lord Omega just for hand control and for re recycling the banished uh, Lich cards. One copy of Draco Berserker of the Tenyi just because upon act activates. Uh, Destroy Phoenix and Forces effect, I'll chain Draco, Draco Berserker and banish it so that it's not a problem anymore. The only thing I'm sad about with Dr Berserker of the Tiny is that it just banishes. It doesn't actually just draw, negate. And I play one copy of Scarlight just so I can clear any effect monster that's like weaker than 3000. And I play one copy of Sun Dragon NT. If NT is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can destroy the monster that destroyed it and then bring your opponent equal to half of that monster's attack points on the field. And then a Sun Dragon NT is destroyed, you can target one Moon Dragon Queen in your grave, especially on it. Then to finish off the extra deck, I play the two copies of Constellar Pleiades. This is just a quick effect, detach, target one card of the field, return it to the hand. And then I play the one copy of Elich the Mad Golden Lord. And its effect is just always treated as Elich the Golden Lord while it's on the field. It can't be destroyed by battle or card effects. And then you contribute one zombie monster. Target one face up monster your opponent controls. Take control of it, but you can't attack or activate its effects that turn. You can only use that effect of Mad Golden Lord once per turn. I just like it because of how it's a permanent steal. But that is it for my Earthbound deck profile. If you have any ideas of what you would like to see deck profiles you'd like to see me make, or decks you'd like to see face each other, feel free to comment those below. And once again, if you've seen anything that you think could be corrected in the, my Earthbound Mortal deck, feel free to comment those below as well. Thanks for watching.